uh, senior counsel first try to uh, project uh, that this is a case where the dissenting uh, financial creditors have not applied their mind and they had a malicious intention and the adjudicating authority is duty bound to correct that anomaly and when they have a malified intentions and the fairness is affected then the adjudicating authority should have intervened and then corrected the injustice um that is called doctrine of fairness even if it is a commercial decision which is to be left to the uh, stay financial creditors when such uh, uh, malified intentions and the intention of the legislature and the larger interest of the stakeholders in overall context is ignored then uh, the honorable adjudicating authority or the appellate body must have looked into those points and uh, <clears throat> and he was contending that is a retrospective effect should be given it is not a mandatory provision it is only a directory in nature coming to the second uh, issue mm. that is uh, taken to consideration is uh, uh, 75% has been reduced to 66% so that means uh, parliament has uh, realized uh, uh, that uh, it is a cure 75% is not achieving the object for which it is being made and therefore to cure that only uh, the ordinance has come into picture so therefore uh, the um, parliament intended encourage revival of the corporate debtor and maximization of the value of the assets to discourage liquidation resulting in closure of functioning of the company on which many stakeholders depended such as its workers with regard to the objection to the locust now the next parts uh, the opposite party took the stand that first step is the chairman and managing director of the corporate debtor is uh, not a party who can question or we can expect the revival of the company otherwise the interest will be affected the day default takes place and the proceedings are initiated he loses his uh, uh, local standing and uh, there is express provision contained in 61 of the code and the appellant uh, has already initiated the uh, nclat proceedings um, so therefore uh, he is uh, still a re- relevant party that is what he has uh, taken the stand whereas the opposite side is uh, who is this man to contend all these things he has no local standing but uh, for that uh, to counter it um they he has brought in that is already moved uh, under section 61 appeal against that uh, judgment of nclc and nclat has passed the orders on that uh, section 61 therefore he gets that uh, right and uh, in addition to that uh, as a shareholder not as the chairman and managing director he is uh, he has every right to insist for revival of the corporate debtor instead of its liquidation now uh, the next one is uh, that section 29 debars him he is not and if the test of that 29a is applied he will be disqualified for that uh, uh, it was contended that uh, this section 29a has come much later on 23rd november 2017 not at the time when the matter is uh, Uh, adjudicated for liquidation so these are all the issues uh, that were presented uh, by abhishek manu singhvi now let's go to what the supreme court has uh, uh, discussed on